how do you build community in this age of hyper individualism? We have deeper yearnings for community and connection and sharing. And something as simple as gardening really brings people together in very tangible ways. Um, we live in a neighborhood where we have a, a green space um, that's surrounded by a group home for people with disabilities, a, uh, extend, a, a care home for people with dementia. We have many seniors in our neighborhood. And we thought, how could we, we bring people together and create a, an interactive space? Um, so we started with a small garden at the front of our school, and people came out of the woodwork. We had a, a father that built benches, built benches out of an old futon. We had a senior that built a birdhouse out of hockey sticks. Um, and we also built a beautiful mosaic bench uh, when a child was actually hit by a car and, and died. Um, an elderly woman actually came out to sit on the bench, and she was absolutely thrilled that uh, there was this public space. So then we began looking at um, the rest of our green space, not as it was, but as it could be. And that's where we really got into gardening. We built raised beds so people with disabilities could sit. There's a nice edge on each bed, and you can sit and garden. We have a mother with uh, MS that was very involved and uh, loves to garden. And she said, this will make it accessible for all kinds of people that can't get down and garden. Um, we've had visitors from the seniors' home come in their wheelchairs and, and weed a few things because the beds are kind of at wheelchair level as well if you can't get out of your chair. Um, you know, initially we called this project the Holyrood Commons, but people thought we were trying to attract a Walmart. The word commons has um, fallen out of disuse or it's been taken over by these big box stores. Um, but there is uh, a real strength to creating a commons and bringing people together and to realize that life is more about consuming and shopping, that it does feel good to be part of community. Um, we had a father with a brain injury um, that was severely depressed and hospitalized. And uh, we asked, he loved carpentry, and we asked him if he'd be interested in building um, a cedar storage bench. And he partnered with the senior at the senior center, and they built a beautiful bench together. Um, and also he found a place where he belonged. Um, I think a big part of this is also belonging. Um, belonging really contributes to our health and our well-being. And I, I, I've seen it. We can contribute to each other's well-being, but how do we connect when we're, uh, we're so busy pursuing things that don't, don't fill us up? We're trying to fill a hole that can't be filled. Great neighborhoods make up, um, make up our cities. That's where that's where we can have the greatest impact on our quality of life. Um, in our neighborhood too, we've, we have the we say it's a great place to grow up and grow old. We have a lot of seniors and we want to create a neighborhood for free range seniors and, and kids and we have people out active. And I, I really know the garden has really created to that sense of, yeah, I can go out my front door and, and uh, I'm not going to be alone. It's safe. There's other people out there. It's kind of Jane Jacobs' idea, more eyes on the street, the safer our neighborhoods are, the less isolated we are from each other. Well, we have an aging population. Um, the first baby boomers turned 65 in 2011. And uh, how, there's so many gifts and contributions seniors can make to our neighborhoods, but we need to find ways to connect. Uh, our theme for our garden was wise acres and eco sprouts as a way of um, getting that intergenerational piece together. Uh, Margaret Mead said something to the effect of, you know, we need to get our elders back to the business of raising children if they're going to get a sense of our past, our present, and our future. There's such a rich learning there. And, uh, but we need to create spaces for that to happen. Like Nellie McClung said, you know, it's not enough just to raise our own children. We have to look at everyone's children. And I really think about those, those children in, in subsidized housing or low-income housing where they're concentrated, where as a neighborhood like this, we can support families like that. And that needs to happen throughout the city of Edmonton. And I think by starting to talk to each other about a preferred future and what we might co-create here, we're creating fertile ground for being a more hospitable community. Hospitality is so important because then new gifts come into the community.